Crystal. I wanted to give you guys uh, an update, kind of details on uh, this pregnancy. And I thought I'd start with kind of how we got pregnant. And if you've followed me for a long time, you know that I had an old channel and I have a history of infertility. It took um, 15 months, so like a year and a half to conceive Elise with seven medicated cycles and two IUIs. Uh, the winning dosage was um, 7.5 milligrams of Femera and an IUI after an HSG. So uh, that was my history on that. So when Ryan and I um, talking about having more children, we figured that we should probably start sooner than later. I've hit 30 and so, you know, time is kind of of the essence, especially if you don't know if it's going to take a year and a half or more. So um, we thought we would want to start pretty soon, but with breastfeeding, um, it turned out that it looked like I wasn't going to be the type that could get my cycle back. Um, while breastfeeding. At around when Elise was 10 months old, I kind of realized that that's probably <laughs> what was going to happen. I had no signs of ovulation and no signs of getting my cycle back. So um, I had done a really good job of pumping a lot and getting a big freezer stash supplied. So my plan was to start slowly cutting out um, nursing sessions and supplementing with my freezer stash and if that would bring back my cycle great and um, if not we'd see you know if we continued to have to wean so I started by you know slowly one week cutting out one session and supplementing uh, then two and by the time she was 11 and a half months old I was only down to I was actually only nursing her one or two times a day and still nothing. Um, so I decided that I was going to have to completely wean in order to probably get my cycle back. So I uh, decided to wean. Um, I didn't want to. I really, you know, with breastfeeding being such a challenge at the beginning, it was so easy uh, towards the end. But I also, you know, really want a sibling for Elise, so it kind of, you know, won out. She also uh, didn't do it for any, like, comfort reasons. It was basically solely for food. She is a cuddle bug on her own right, so she just cuddles with us all the time anyway, so it wasn't really, like, a comfort thing. So I didn't really feel bad, and she really didn't care. So uh, that's what we were doing. My last nursing session was on April 3rd, so just a couple days before her birthday, and um, so at that nursing session, that last nursing session, I decided I should order some OPKs, and I just wanted to see, you know, start taking OPKs to see if anything was going to happen. So I ordered the OPKs, started taking them around, I think it was like April 5th, um, started taking OPKs, and then it was around April 13th, around April 13th-ish, um, the OPK started getting really dark. And I was like, oh, I don't know, it's so soon <laughs> after stopping breastfeeding, but who knows. So um, it started getting really dark. I pretty much thought I had a positive, but it turns out that I really had a positive on um, it's either the 14th or the 15th. Um, I think it was the 14th, and yeah, it was the 14th. I had like a blazing positive, like a really, really strong positive, stronger than any natural positive I had ever seen. I had only, in that 15 months of trying, I had only um, ovulated three times on my own naturally. The rest were either anovulatory or brought on with medication. So, um, but I should go back. I also had a history during those anovulatory cycles of getting lots of, well, lots, like three positive OPKs and still never ovulating. So I don't really trust OPKs all that much. Um, and I also, because 
I wouldn't, you know, I figured, oh, well, maybe I wasn't interpreting the lines correctly, even though it's not too hard to, you know, be able to see the test lines darker um, than the control line. But I switched to the ones that had a little smiley face. And uh, so I'd get a bunch of smiley faces and then still never ovulate. So anyway, when I got this positive, I was happy, but I didn't, you know, really give that much uh, credit to it. So um, we were trying. We just, I was just hoping that I would actually ovulate. My pregnancy wasn't even in my, you know, even head yet because I didn't even think we'd start until I got that first, you know, first menstrual cycle and then we'd start. So, um, anyway, uh, I s kept on taking OPKs and sure enough it got lighter um, after that big uh, surge on the 14th. Um, kept on taking them though and then around two weeks later I got a blazing positive, like even more positive than the one on the 14th and I'm like Great, here it goes again, you know, I'm gonna probably be back in the same boat, so, um, you know, I'm kind of frustrated again already, just going, uh, not looking forward into having to do the same stuff over again, but I was on Facebook, and there was a couple girls talking about how they get positive OPKs when they're pregnant, and I hadn't heard of that, I just, I don't know why, but I hadn't, so, it just planted that tiny little bit of a seed in my head. Um, and enough of the seed whereby the next morning I couldn't stand it really and I decided to take a pregnancy test. And this was the day before Elise's big birthday party. It wasn't her actual birthday, but her big birthday party here. And lo and behold, at five o'clock in the morning, I took a pregnancy test and there was two lines. And I flipped out. I mean, I was just happy. I was like sobbing like I was with Lise, but I ran and pounced on my husband and, you know, I didn't do it with him. I didn't even say I was going to take it because, again, I wasn't expecting this at all. And even though I had that little seed planted in my head from um, Facebook, I really was just to rule it out just to know that, yep, I'm going to have to wait for these crazy cycles and all this stuff. So, um that's kind of the unexpected story and you know it's not like it's a hundred percent shock because it, you know we weren't preventing so but it was a surprise and for someone to have to deal you know dealing with infertility to actually get a surprise pregnancy kind of um, it's just really um, special I think because a lot of us that have experienced infertility it's been so scientific, everything's so planned out, it's, there's not a lot of fun left to it, and, um, or surprise, and, uh, so I got a surprise, so I'm really thankful for that. So that's kind of the story. Um, after my positive pregnancy test, I, um, really just totally have felt different about this one this pregnancy compared to Elise's. As soon as I was got a positive pregnancy test um, with Elise, I waited till 17 DPO to test for her. I ran like straight in to get betas that same day, you know, and you know, scheduled ultrasound like that day and it was just very like, you know, <laughs> very medical. And uh, with this one, I had no desires to have betas drawn just didn't even want to do it. Part of it was because even with um, the betas for Elise, uh, my numbers were a tiny bit slow to um, double and the nurse was like, well, you know, we'd like to see it double a little faster this and just the way they just handled it, I just it didn't put me off <laughs> from those numbers. Uh, so I didn't even do that. All I ended up doing was um, researching that uh, I decided I wanted to go with midwives this time even though I loved my OB I had but I didn't have him for my delivery and there's really not a very good chance that I will have uh, I would have him for another delivery so I really just didn't want another hospital birth if I can help it um, if you watched my labor and delivery story 
it wasn't a horrible experience, but it wasn't great. And there's a lot to be improved upon. So we'll see. So I have found some amazing midwives um, and uh, that has a birthing center. I have the option to do a home birth, but I actually think I'll be comfortable, more comfortable in their birthing rooms with the big tub. I don't have to worry about cleaning up any of the mess. My water broke with Elise at home here and I was pretty uncomfortable. I didn't know where to go. I was like sitting on a towel, sitting on the bathroom floor. So I just think it will be better to be at the birthing center. Uh, it's also only like two minutes from the hospital if we did have to transfer, but transfer rates for second pregnancies or second deliveries are um, pretty low. So I'm very excited about the midwives. They're pretty awesome. They sent me like homemade cards and they're just, it's just a whole different level of care than what I experienced at a hospital. So, um, so we're super happy with that. I ended up having a ultrasound at seven weeks. Um, which I thought it would be seven weeks, um, just because since I didn't have a menstrual period to go off of, except from, let's say, July 2010 would have been my last menstrual cycle, um, uh, they wanted a dating ultrasound. And just like Elise, uh, this baby was measuring three days behind, uh, so they are giving me a slightly later due date, just like with Elise, um, but I've kept the original due date with Elise. And I'm going to keep the original due date for this baby um, based on my positive OPKs because I didn't even make it to my due date, my original due date that I had with Elise. I was nine weeks and five days, I think, with Elise. So I have a feeling this baby will probably come early too, um, or before the uh, January 6th is the due date I'm getting. I mean, they're saying January 10th. So we shall see. Um, as far as the pregnancy so far, it's pretty much been the exact same as with Elise. I've felt really pretty good the whole time. Um, I have a slightly weaker stomach than normal, like uh, spraying out diapers has been a bit of a challenge. Uh, sometimes I'll be a little gaggy with that <laughs> if you aren't already doing that. Um, it can be a little interesting. Um, I've had some few food aversions. I felt a little nauseous at times, but no, I wouldn't even call it morning sickness. Um, I, uh, with Elise, I didn't um, even, you know, ever get sick or anything uh, with her. But this pregnancy, I had a time, a couple, a good stretch where I was pretty sick, but I actually think it was a stomach bug. And then actually last night, I had said um, I was going to really start focusing on eating healthy again. Um, I am a pretty good healthy eater anyway, but I had been kind of breaking my rules of snacking at night and eating more carbs and like, you know, breads and pastas than I normally do. So I was really going to get back on track. So yesterday I ate super healthy and then I, um, because I was hungry before I went to bed, um, I ate some watermelon and I don't know, but it didn't seem to sit well and I'm watching Megan and Layla's um, Market Fresh Wednesday and my first sign, which is weird, but when I'm gonna get sick, it's a sound like the sound of the music in the, her video like instantly like made me even more nauseous So I had to like stop it and sometimes it's someone's voice like if Ryan's there and I'm sick or something I'll just have to tell him to, like shut up sorry just quiet <laughs> I don't know it's one weird thing that I have anyway so when um, I had to t like turn the video like the sound off um, but as soon as I did that I realized I was gonna be sick so I had to go to the bathroom and I was sick but as soon as I was done I felt a whole lot better so really not too much to complain about I've been sick only once so far with these two pregnancies other than being in um, active labor with Elise. So fatigue um, was pretty bad at the beginning. I just wanted to take naps, but I never was able to. And then um, I would honestly put Elise to bed at eight and I would pretty much crawl upstairs shortly after. So, um, but now I'm kind of back up to staying up a little later and starting to get my energy level back. I've been working out as normal. Um, other than if I just haven't felt 100% like 
I still don't really feel like jumping around much. So I take it a little easy until I get into my second trimester. Um, let's see, anything else? I have a little list here. Um, yeah, at uh, 10 weeks I was able to find the heartbeat on my Doppler. It took till 13 weeks with lease, so that was exciting. Um, and let's see, I'm 12 weeks, five days today. I felt some movement, some little flutters ever since 10 weeks, which is crazy. Um, but I, it's the exact same with what I felt with Elise at like 15 weeks, so I know what to look for. And it's sometimes it's not every day, or it's usually just like once or twice I'll feel it a day, but and it's all skip days, but that's normal. So. Other than that, we're uh, really excited. I'm happy to start getting my energy level back, and we're just we're just thrilled. I have a feeling it's going to be another girl, uh, just because the pregnancy seems to be so similar um, to Elise's. But who knows? We didn't find out the gender um, with Elise, so she was a surprise. But we will find out with this baby. I'm not sure how or if I will announce it the gender but we'll see um I won't be doing pregnancy vlogs um I might just pop on here and update once in a while but really my pregnancies are thankfully so uneventful and pretty boring that there's not much to say so all right well that's the story to uh baby number two thanks for watching